today i am here to discuss a new topic called automated test framework so first of all uh, why need we, we need that automated test framework basically automated test framework help you to test automatically without uh, someone manually check that it, this is working or not okay so suppose let's talk about that as a tester whoever is doing to testing what they need to be do they have to be visit any form particular manually and then from there only they will execute test cases one by one and then they will note it down the test result and maybe take the screenshot wherever it needed same things can be done uh, through that automated test framework for the service now so they introduce this module uh, so um, let's see how we can do that before we go to that automated test framework we must have to be know that what we are trying to achieve right as a tester if i am thinking as a tester what i am going to do um, uh, in in this uh, test scenario right so let's see so if i talk about the incident module so let me open that incident module and go to the create new first uh, things will be came to in my mind that i should be impersonate some user and then whenever uh, the user will be impersonate they should be able to see some of the certain fields right for example they should be able to see the number caller category sub category service configuration item short description those things right and then finally they will once they will save that once let's see i'm just manually doing that through the autom automated test framework we also we also do perform the same case so once a user manual user try to submit they have to be filled some mandatory uh, validation right so they have to be passed through the mandatory validation and they have to be set the caller they have to be set the short description then only they will be able to submit the form so first thing is that we have to be create one user with the particular role and have to be check that they are able to access this incident form or not and then finally once we select um, this mandatory uh, data they should be able to uh, like once we put that user test test and then once we save that it should be submit okay and after that it should be changed to the in progress test and whenever we are resolving there are some certain mandatory field that needs to be selected right so that is our uh, automated test framework we are going to cover is this part so let's do that let me see once uh, once more time okay so you have to go to the automated test framework uh, this module and this is the test here you can re uh, write the test cases okay and in this test cases there are already pre-built a lot of test cases you can use that or you can check that how they build and you can start so for this one mostly 80 percent things are ui based you don't have to write any code for these things so first we have a test where you can create multiple test cases okay for suppose one is the incident um, submission incident resolve you can create multiple types of test cases and then we have a switch in the switch we are added multiple test cases into one single switch so that once we run this switch it will run all these um cha all these test cases inside this switch okay let me open that one of the test uh, switches so you can see in the test switch there are almost 20 or 30 test cases attached to that okay and it can be uh, these test cases can be automatically uh, run and this is the activate uh, options so you can run that so before we go into that part let's see how we can build a simple straightforward incident one and then we'll uh, talk about more on the details okay so i am here in the test module let me going to create one new uh, test case here by clicking the new I'm able to create a new one so that's fine but I'm going to uh, put that incident ATM okay. so there is a enable parameterized testing case also there so if you want to parameterize um, something you can do that okay so I have not till yet enable that ATF so it's giving me that um, I have to enable that so we'll do that later first click you can put that description or whatever you need so in the test you have to be define the test steps if you remember 
whenever uh, as a tester who need to be perform the testing case they first have to be visit that uh, their test case like test 100 inside that there are certain function right certain steps they need to be perform and every stage they mark as a pass or fail right so we'll do the same thing so first we'll uh, go to the test steps and first what we'll do either we can impersonate a user or create a user right so let's create a user i'm going to create a test incident atf user who is going to be uh, who will have that um, itl role who will actually going to see that form okay uh, i'm so going to create a user uh, if you can see at the first time last time and i can put that roles groups whatever i want to include that and then once i click that impersonate uh, there is a checkbox impersonate this user so instead uh, it is like two steps create it will create a user no, uh, along with that using these steps only they can impersonate okay so let's do that i am going to put that atf uh, so our first step is added here uh, I think it should be show under this one. So you can see that create a user, first name ATF and the last name is ITL user. So the username will be ATF ITL user with that ITL role. Okay. Now next step is that we should be able to um, impersonate that user. So let's select that impersonate user and you can see that insert after. So we need to be insert, it, it will be automatically populated if you don't want to make rearrange okay so you can see at the beginning or at the which step so we have a step one so after step one we want to insert so click the next it will show you that all the uh, user so i need to be select the user okay i can manually select any of this user or else in this pillar i can select that the steps so first steps i'm going to select that user okay so that's our add creation and user impersonation is done now we have to be uh, open a form where i can submit the incident so let's add that to do that if you see there are various uh, uh, option if you click the all steps you will be able to see all the steps here otherwise these are the section wise um, and categories wise okay so we are going to perform these steps into our native application not in the portal we can do the same thing under the portal also but this, for the time being, we are going to do that um, under the native application, as I show in the earlier, right? So in the in the form, you can see open a new form. We are going to open a new form, or that is called incident form. And then we are going to validate certain things and submit them. First, open the form. Okay, and what we are going to do? we are going to open this form um, under which table incident table, right so let's put that okay and here are the few options that i am so standard way or agent works well, that is fine if you want to mention any uh, view you can mention that otherwise just submit that okay so we are going to open the incident form that should be our third step and the fourth step is that validation right so what are the steps we need to be performed so first to do that let's go back to the incident form so that we can know more uh, details so we should be uh, able to check that caller id and the short description is the mandatory fields right and then state should be default value is the um, new state you can see that so we, we first will validate that caller and the short description in mandatory or not category subcategory these fields are present or not okay these things let's do that so i'm going to uh, may make more simple so click that add step here now um, we have a call uh, if you see mm, so field uh, values validation okay and there is one more called the field state validation okay so field state validation is help you to check that this is mandatory non-mandatory read only or those stops field value validation help you to check that what are the value we have you are looking for okay 
so first we are going to check that field state validation what the validation we are going to do we are going to check that that incident short description caller is mandatory or not okay so let's do that mandatory field so we know that caller and short description is the mandatory put that caller and the short description is mandatory okay and then uh, let's check that some non mandatory field call um, category and not not the category uh, we can talk about that uh, resolution code and resolution notes which will be mandatory at that stage of uh, whenever it will be resolved right so we'll check that resolution code resolution code and resolution note is not mandatory at the initial stage okay and then if you can want to check that some read only field you can check that some read only fields let's talk about that priority is the read only field so we'll put the read only field is the priority so that's it okay so our initial in that initial form we are checking what are the things that valid um, mandatory non mandatory what are the things we can do okay next uh, you can see that we can check that initially whenever the sum the form is opening the state is new and the category is inquiry and help right so we can check that uh, so you can say uh, so check that field values validation and click the next so that you can validate that field value okay so what are the value we are going to check that the condition is the state is new right so we should be put able to put that on the state is new and the category is inquiry help we'll check that state is new and category is inquiry help okay so these two we are also uh, validating that after your form is validated what your step should be you should be able to submit this form right so let's do that you should be able to put the caller whoever is actually going to uh, that user and the short description should be some short description okay so let's do that so add steps here and uh, we are going to check that um, first we are going to set some value right so set fields value click next and we are going to set the value the caller should be that the impersonated user right the steps one that we user we created right so we are going we are going to set that is dynamically so caller so automatically is populated you can see the caller and short description caller should be that create user that user and short description should be so one of the speciality of this atf is that after your execution is this atf it will be automatically rolled back so it will suppose it is creating their one incident during time of the data execution after that it will revert by roll back that incident so that then the database whatever the things will be created it will go back okay so once you set that value the next step is that submit that form right so submit button now we have to check that what is the submit button click edit button and this submit button is uh, set it on which table let's see that this is on the global table and this is the submit button okay so we'll click that button so that incident it be able to submit okay so let's do that so going to that steps we are going to add one step called click the ui action so using the click the ui action we are able to uh, submit that ui action global submit ui action okay so let's do that so I am getting a uh, disable popped up blocker so let me enable this one um, and now I should be able to select that um, submit button
okay and here uh, there is a few options so uh, from submitted to the server form submission cancel in the browser so you have to select this one and submit so initial phase of your ATF test cases is that you are going to impersonate one ITL user impersonating that open the form checking the validation and then submitting that form so our ATF is created for the submission one right so let's run this test cases before you run these test cases you have to make sure that this property is activated or not so if you go to this automated test framework there is a property okay this property have to be enabled these two property has to be enabled so that you can run this your ATF okay so let's run our ATF test cases and see how it will behave okay I'm going to run this one so you will be able to see it will impersonate that user whatever it created and then finally it will be uh, start working as we are lo looking for let's see so now you can see this connected status is connected and this is the ATF ideal user who is actually uh, performing these test cases because you can see the connecting executing as a ITL user okay and who will be able to do all those stuffs okay so it will be going to select some uh, uh, setting some value so you will be able to check that okay so first this is validating all these forms okay and then it will set some value so you can see that it said that ATF ITL user incident and then it will be submit the record so once that is done you will be able to see that test result by go to the test result you will be able to see all these results here and all the screenshot that is taken care at the time of submitting the record okay so that's all about that basic ATF test cases uh, if, even if you want to you can uh, uh, download any of these test cases and uh, like screenshot and check that okay so if you open that one uh, you can see this is that um, screenshot they take care at the time of execution if you need but actually if you go to that your um, system you won't be able to see any incident number like that because after your creation it will be rolled back all these case okay so let's uh, see that last screenshot this one you can see this is the uh, last screenshot before that we have a screenshot called this one it will take now if I open that you can see that ATF ideal user and the incident created from ATF this value is set it from there only it is already doing so that's it for the basic stuffs if you want to learn more complexity uh, just ping me in the whatsapp or comments in in my uh, uh, youtube video chat we'll see okay have a great day